Hey everybody, welcome to the Swirl Suite. So we made it through New Orleans. We made it through the Black Wine Experience with the Hue Society. And good news, the audio was not bad at all. So we were able to record all of our interviews with all of the winemakers and guests that um, we had scheduled over the weekend. And um, they're ready to go. So because they're so long, we broke them up into pieces. So in this first episode of the Black Wine Experience, you are going to hear our interview with Brene Royal, Derek Epps, and Jenny Don, aka Jennifer McDonald. So all three guests do something very different in wine. So listen up and be sure to like, subscribe, please provide comments, follow all of these guys. They're doing some great work in wine and they're all people of color. Cheers. at the Black Experience to Swirl Suite. We are all about wine culture and from Washington, D.C. area. So we're repping the Maryland D.C. Exactly. And, and my, I'm here with my girls. Exactly. From, and we're here in the Big Easy just relaxing and enjoying wine. Blacks and, blacks and wine, diversity in wine. And we have Vino 301, Vino Noir, Vine Me Up. Yes. Like, and we're winding it up in the Big Easy. And we're sipping in the swirl suite, guys. And we're sipping in the swirl suite. And missing our other fourth partner, whose girl meets glass, who's in Paris. So what, she couldn't make it in, but cheers. Cheers. Black Wine Experience with the Hue Society. And this is our first guest today. Yes. Renee. Welcome, Renee. Thank you. Cheers. 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 So, Renee, mm. what are we drinking? We, what are we drinking? So, this is one of the brands that I farm for. This is Mount Peak, and Mount Peak is just the brand name. We have a Zinfandel, we have a um, Cabernet Sauvignon, and today we're drinking our red blend called Gravity. Hmm. Nice. So I hope you ladies enjoy. It's one of our bigger, bolder wines that comes off of the Monterosa Vineyard that I manage. Nice. And um, this kind of came to fruition because we generally farm for our state program, our Monterosa blends. But this gave us an opportunity to kind of highlight some of the younger blocks that I farm for at, at Monterosa. And why the name Gravity? Gravity because the elevation of the vineyard goes from 690 feet up to 1300 feet. So one of the predominant blocks in this er, in this uh, blend actually hits down at 690 feet. So it's one of the lower ones that we think, you know, gravity is pulling that down. So nice. So I apologize. We just jumped in because you're like, you know, one of the girls, you're one of the swirls. That's where you right now, exactly. <laughs> tell our listeners who you are and what you do and why you are so awesome. So, um, <laughs> I'm Brene Royal. I work for E&J Gallon Winery. I am one of the vineyard managers and I manage Monterosso Vineyard. So Monterosso is one of the oldest vineyards in the United States. Uh -huh. I farm things anywhere from stuff I planted literally just a week ago um, up until 133 years old. Uh, the entire property is 575 acres, but 250 of those acres are planted to Grapevine. So I am the, the manager, the lead farmer. I manage all of the people. I manage the farming. I manage the budgets, the tours, the sales. Wow. Anything that has to do with Monterosso, I, I oversee. So it is my little small business within the, within the company. Oh, outstanding. And how did you get into uh, managing a vineyard, managing a small little piece of heaven on earth. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, I was drinking wine, so I grew up, I literally got my thumb, my green thumb from my grandmother. I was the only grandchild that wanted to get into her garden and get her hands okay. dirty. Like my twin sister to this day. You have a twin like, sister? I do. Oh, <laughs> no. Wow. And she will like, hate to even have dirt on her hands, whereas I'm digging, not with these mm. all the time. Um, but yeah, I started my first kind of farming venture with my grandmother, and then I got into FFA and was raising pigs and and doing row crops like corn and different things like that. And then I decided to follow that into college because I got an academic scholarship, but quickly learned that I did not want to do animal science because I don't have any emotional capacity for 
dying animals. Right, uh, right. <laughs> and then, um, so I, I switched to crops and horticulture science, and it was in my last year of school that I had a glass of wine and was like, oh, you know, I enjoy this. I can probably grow it. And interviewed with Gallo for an internship, and they hired me a week after graduation. Oh, outstanding. Wow. Thank you. I know your parents was happy about that. You know, they were kind of confused. <laughs> I come from a... <laughs> <laughs> I come from a family of teachers and doctors, so when I was raising pigs and all this stuff, they just they were like, "Where does she fall off?" And then when I when it came to um, me working for the company that makes their favorite wine, they were like, "Oh, okay, great, we made it." We <laughs> were. And now that I live on the vineyard, they're like, "Oh, we get it. Why you don't visit?" Perfect. <laughs> like, so now they're like, "Woo, okay, you know what my daughter does." So, but yeah, no, they were, they're still kind of confused. That's, you know, it's, it's interesting because people don't realize the significance of your job. You know, it's, it's, it's cliche, but it's not cliche because good wine starts with good grapes. Mm -hmm. And people don't, they give the credit to the winemaker, but not the vineyard ma master. So vineyard manager so that is big ups to you oh you know? thank you i'll take it even a step further like good grapes come from good land and exactly. so you have to be a steward of the land like yes. i you know my we always have the end goal of the end product and a great end product that people are excited about but how did we get there and it wasn't the winemaker and it, it wasn't even me. It was it was the land that we're farming that we're cultivating. So while I'm always after vine health, I'm always after good wine, I'm always after protecting my people, I'm trying to be a steward of the land because my vineyard has been around for 133 years. I'm trying to see it transcend another oh, nice. century. Exactly. And I'm trying to see those vines. No one knows when a grapevine, how long it can go, but I've got some stuff that's 133 years old mm -hmm. and still producing. Mm -hmm. I want to see that go even further. Mm -hmm. so, and produce some old vines, though, right? Right. <laughs> yeah, I do produce a lot of old vine stuff. So, it, you know, it's a whole grand scheme of things, and I'm really happy to see that the focus is going to, well, how did we get here? And putting the showcase on the people who are working day in and day out to get to this. Because yeah. I can tell you, it doesn't start at winemaking. I mean, because, I, so I have a question. Like, you are working at one of the best wineries. Yes. And one of the most popular wineries. And you guys have been doing this for a very long time. What advice would you give to a new winemaker that, say, just surveying the land that they're on and trying to figure out if they can even grow grapes? A new winemaker, I would, you know, there are a number of tests that you can do. You can test your soil. Mm -hmm. You can get all types of analysis of what pest diseases, things like that. Mm -hmm. you, there's also a lot of wine and root stocks that can work almost anywhere. So mm -hmm. do your homework, mm -hmm. figure out where you want to go. I think to take it even a step further, wanting to become a winemaker and wanting to become a vineyard manager, like there are a lot of people who want to do it and are afraid of doing mm -hmm. it. And I would just say, just do it, just jump out there, especially mm -hmm. for other black women and, and women of color of any ethnicity, like just do it mm -hmm. because you're going to be you know, the unicorn in the room, you're going yeah. to get questioned, you know, we're looking for the boss and you got to reintroduce yourself. Exactly. So, right. so, right. It's like, it's me. You know, yeah. so yeah. as far as like, you know, wanting to figure out, yes. you know, is this land even viable? You know, do your homework, do your research. Yeah. There's a lot of education out there, but then even for the people who are just looking to get into the industry, do it because there's going to be a place for you, whether mm -hmm. you have to create it or you, you get with some allies who are all about it and who are gonna lift you up. Yeah. Because right. that's something that I've been very fortunate to have as a, as a company like Gallo that has invested quite a lot in me and I've, oh, I've progressed nice. quite quickly in my six years. Um, so, you know, just, just have the confidence to do it and reach out to people. I certainly didn't get here by myself. Oh, outstanding. Yeah, uh, I love it. just love it. So, let's talk a little bit about gravity. Yes. So this is our 2015 vintage, which is special people. to me. Sipping in the so when I, <laughs> when I took over Monterosso, so something that's super special about me because Mount Peak is, I mentioned, it started kind of because we we had a lot of fruit and Monterosso is 250 acres, but you don't want that wine to taste the same. And we farm so technically out there that within blocks I can farm for multiple wines, and so. 
after we made we hit all the target wine styles for our state program we were like okay well we have some more good fruit where can we put it this comes from younger blocks so the estate stuff is generally 70 to 133 years old this stuff's anywhere from 12 years old to about 40 years old so our younger blocks on the property if you want to call those young but gives you more of a vibrant exposure of Monterosso. And generally, I have 10 varieties on site, Cabernet Sauvignon and Zinfandel being the predominant varieties. Mm. But my third predominant variety is Petite Syrah, and that is the base. Base for this, okay. Okay. So that inky, inky black color is is from our our base of Petite Syrah. I believe the color is beautiful, yeah. but it's also a young wine. This isn't a wine you want to lay down for a number of okay. years. Okay. It's drinkable now. Okay. You can enjoy this now. I love drinking this when I have some meat in front of me, when I have okay. a meal. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so Petit Syrah is our base. I believe this is a 15% alcohol, so uh, on the bigger scale, mm-hmm. but doesn't have so much acidity and tannin sure. that... You yeah. know, it's a punch to the throat. You can yeah. enjoy this alone as well. It's easy. It's fun. It, yeah. It's got a beautiful nice. label. Yeah. Show you that label. <laughs> yes. um, but beautiful label. And, and this has really been a passion project uh, between uh, the winemaker and myself. So every year, especially like this year, that's been a little bit more difficult. Finding those specific spots on the vineyard to craft this wine. Mm. So that's something that's incredibly fun about Monterosso. We've got 64 blocks and a million ways we can probably do stuff. But farming specifically with gravity in mind is Mm -hmm. what we look for when we're walking the blocks, when I'm thinking about my farming practices, how many passes we're going to do and things like that, knowing that this is the goal. Mm -hmm. So this was our second, our sophomore effort. Oh, nice. 2014 was the inception. Um, So very proud of this. Our 2016 is also out, and then we'll see 2017 later this year. But um, our sophomore effort, I'm, I'm pretty proud about. Yes. And this is the year that I did officially take over Monterosso. So that's oh, outstanding. That's awesome. So how involved are you with the winemaking process? Like, you produce the fruit, you hand it over, and you're like, don't mess it up. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, don't mess up my grapes. Right. So how involved are you with working with the winemaker, making suggestions on the style of wine that's going to be produced? So it's been a privilege for me to manage Monterosso because it's highly revered. And so any winemaker going out there is just excited. And it's fun okay. to work with people who are not only good at their jobs, but passionate about it and trying to trying to transcend things that are already mm-hmm. exclusive or great. Right. Um, so I'm super involved with winemaking. Okay. Um, I think they're ultimately my customers, so mm-hmm. I tend to be incredibly transparent about okay. my goals what I'm looking forward to doing, what I'm seeing in the season. Um, so we walk the blocks almost every two weeks. Okay. Uh, you get your hiking shoes on. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we start chasing through fruit. Right now, the, the grapes are about to change color, okay. otherwise known as beriche. I was about to ask yeah. what's Beration. going on in the vineyard It's right about now. to start, so, yeah. you know, this is the calm before the storm. Yeah. Um, also, I don't look like this at work, so you may not recognize <laughs> no, me really. in the <laughs> element. But, um... We're super, super involved. Mm -hmm. Um, We do know how farming affects the grapes. So when I'm going through and talking to them about what I'm going to do specifically for cluster exposure or Mm -hmm. the timing of when I'm going to do it, we're all kind of like, Mm -hmm. and we're we're doing data analysis through a number of different ways and techniques. Mm -hmm. And we also have historical data. So like for us, 2019 is on par for 2010. We know how 22 oh, okay. went. Yeah. I can look at all that data and go, hmm. So as okay. I'm crafting what I'm going to do on the farming side, I'm saying that to winemaking as we can look back and be like, okay, mm-hmm. this is kind of where we're headed. Right. Okay. So as I'm looking for the Monterosso Estate stuff, for the Mount Peak stuff, those sections are going to get treated a little differently mm-hmm. based on how the season is going and what we've known, known mm-hmm. have gone. Okay. Okay. And so winemaking will always be like, you know, what are you thinking about this? Can we return to this this year, like from last year? What are we looking forward to the future? You know, am I going to replant this block? Am I going to change the training style? What are we going to do? So it's a very collaborative effort with That's winemaking awesome. through the end. Yeah. Like I had a hand in even the label. So oh, wow. nice. You know, it's it's very much involved, and I think a huge part of that is being at Monterosso, being at a highly revered vineyard right, that yeah. people are proud mm-hmm, of and want to mm-hmm. see go mm-hmm. places and continue to go places. But uh, it's been, I'm 
yeah, it's it's a team more yeah, that's effort. Good. Yeah, I mean, we, again, the winemaker is always revered, but there's a team behind sure. yeah. how right. you get there. You don't yeah. get good wine from bad farming. Yeah. Right. right. So technically, exactly. I'm the winemaker. I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> right. Farm the grapes. Science is key, right. people. No. Science is key. Yes. Yeah, so all those people. Science is about yes. science. Yes. 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 Mm-hmm. It is. Mm-hmm. That's very interesting. So, um, we were talking about the grapes earlier, so, and the aspect of where this particular vineyard is, so is it, is your mechanism mechanical, or is it, are the grapes hand-picked? What's... It's 100% by hand. Oh, wow. That's why this tastes so well. I'm shocked. So, I'm really shocked. Oh, it is 100% wow. by hand. I have a so very, move. yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I have a very dedicated team. My team oh, has, I have mm-hmm. members of my core team celebrating anywhere from 25 to 38 years this year. The grandfather wow. irrigator is celebrating 38 years. So they've been doing it longer than I've been alive. Wow. So coming in 2015, here I am, this like young, bushy tail. You know, I, I just got out of college. Right yeah. I got all ideas and they were like you know slow your roll no. <laughs> so let me just yeah. Yeah. take a step back and get your Spanish game up and, uh, and, and get better but um, everything is done by hand oh, nice. so right now we've got about 50 people or so and this is uh, generally I can get through the season with about 25 people up until harvest this year we've already had a week of 100 people and then when we get to harvest oh, it's God. about 100 to 100 Wow. And 20 people at night. I do. We do manage harvest oh, nice. 97% of the vineyard at night. So wow. uh, it's a mountaintop vineyard. So exactly. if you can imagine, people are working by headland. It's crazy. Um, we're southwest facing, so we stay hot. We're a region wow. two vineyard. So uh, wildlife is a situation, sure. aka rattlesnakes. Rattle yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, now this is what I checked out. Yeah. yeah, we were like it's sunning a themselves, the rattlesnake. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 yeah, I get a call about everything. So. Oh my god, this is when I check out. Yeah, because I, 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 oh, we can't talk about snakes. They like to sit. So like, oh, this is one of our head train lines, and the rattlesnakes oh, like to sit oh, in this oh, little like I, no. this head train line. That's where you can find them at no. night. So um, it's a hundred percent by hand. So literally everything from start to finish and harvest, hundred percent by hand. So. Uh, we used to do stuff during the day, but it would get too hot, and there's a number of complications that come with wine quality and that, so we switched to nighttime, and we've gone to about 80 tons a night, and we'll be delivering um, to about four wineries a night. So, oh, wow. for me, I, I'm mainly hurting people. <laughs> I'm making sure the vineyards that they went to during the day, like, they know at night as well, because we don't, now we don't have any light. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, majority of the ranch is red grapes. So my first time had better not be at the in the yard at the yeah. scale seeing that fruit for the first time. Right. So I usually have all these different colored tapes and we have different boxes and we have wow. different teams just managing that fruit because we will do like three tons for this winery, 10 tons for this winery. Wow. Mm. And we never pick a block just once. So we're picking like four or five, six times. Mm-hmm. So you have to know exactly what you're getting what you're after and then wow. being able to move on so it's it's very logistically challenging just because right. you have all these moving people or moving people moving pieces yeah. and at the end of the day you want to keep your people safe yeah and we're yeah. working on that yes. so I'm, I'm out there with a high power flashlight i got wow. caution tape I'm, I'm just trying to make sure you know we're going to get through these next 10 hours of picking Wow. Well, I always say that CrossFit has nothing on picking grapes because <laughs> not not a lower lot. body workout. Not like, a lot. Yeah, not good not a lot. Mm-hmm. Go pick some grapes. Right. We have blocks where you can't get a tractor in, so you got to pick and then you got to walk it out. Oh, Ooh. I am the weakest yeah. link. Nice. I'm, I'm out there oh. sweating and I'm trying to show solidarity with the crews, and they're just looking wow. at me like. You know, so thank you, but mm-hmm. just, just get right, on right. Just, way. You slow the process down. <laughs> yeah. Just, we glad you are interested. But go, go, uh, go get a go get a cup of water for me. <laughs> thank you. We know you're with us, but you're slowing us down. But no, it's 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 a situation Whoa. to be picking grapes by hand. Yeah. Fruit, yeah. Is, fruit is heavy. Yeah. But these yeah. rock clusters alone weigh a pound a piece. Wow. Really? So you carry the bucket, bucket. yeah, and work. you gotta yeah. walk it out. Then you gotta walk it back. No, mm. wow. so it. It's, okay. The credit is to those people who see these vineyards and vines intimately. Because I can tell you right now, that's not me. Right. Mm-hmm. And so having faith and confidence and trust in my team to right. get the job done mm-hmm. as I'd like to see it right. requires a level of respect 
that's mutual Wait, and, go, and so a dedication go. to what we're doing it all for, which is the why. And that's that's the key to leadership because you have a vision, but you have to have a team that can implement your vision mm -hmm. and trust that you have their back and vice versa. Exactly. That, and that's key. Exactly. That's key. Being a human at the end of the day because yes. we all have bad days, yes. we got good yes. days, yes. we got in between days. <laughs> So we're at the Black Wine Experience, and one of our questions is, what is your advice to minority winemakers? Ooh. So, being at Gallo, I'm one of, one of the few for now, um, I'd say for minority winemakers, build that relationship with your consumer base. Mm -hmm. um, Make sure, because everybody's got like a loyal fan base who are going to put you on mm -hmm. and expose you to other people. Right. Mm -hmm. And most minority owned winemakers are small, yeah. you know. Um, but um, wineries and winemakers like Brown Estate, like the McBride mm -hmm. sisters, yes. Mm -hmm. yes. like Andre mm -hmm. Mack, yeah. um, they've all capitalized on being personable and having a relationship, relationship. and having. Yeah their story be unique and resonate with people that translates into the wines and so if I were starting my own winery I would just start capitalizing on the relationships with my consumer base and with other people in the industry mm -hmm. I think in my own position being at Gallo people know that name people know our right, brand right, yeah. and so I feel like I have a responsibility to showcase and bring other people up. Right. right. So mm -hmm. for those people that are looking to be brought up, capitalize on your story and your relationship with your consumer base because yes. then it will grow. When you have a relationship with mm -hmm. you, you're now going to show this wine to your friends. Yeah. Right. You're now going to be like, oh my God, you know, I, I met this girl. Right. She she said something that resonated mm -hmm. with me. Right. You have right. to try this. Yeah. You know, she looks just like you. Right. So right. Yes. capitalize mm -hmm. on your relationship building um, with everybody that you can because yeah. that's how you're going to grow organically and then you know the jump off is going to happen when you make those connections yeah. exactly yeah because exactly. the story is in the bottle I mean yeah. the wine is mm -hmm. good and people enjoy it but people enjoy hearing the story yeah. behind the wine story behind the wine, yeah. the wine. And, exactly. and especially I think wine rules are changing but yeah wine is no longer this stuffy pinky up only have at dinner kind of situation yeah. Yeah. like especially and i think with millennials and, and gen z people want products that like relate to them yeah. like yeah. i want something uh -huh. that i'm gonna remember that i want to share that has an experience tied exactly. to it right. that you know i can say i met so and so and she gave me the time of day yeah exactly that's exactly. what i want and i think the right companies are evolving with that and, and having products and having people in it like who make those products out in front so right. i've had that opportunity to be like yeah i, I grow this stuff mm -hmm. i can tell you the ins and outs of this wine and people want that right? yeah like you know, I'm, I'm, I'm nobody, but to somebody who's looking to maybe get into the industry or, or get into wine is going to be like, I'm going to go there. Yeah, right. right. And I'm going to listen to her. Yes. Yeah. So wine has become super accessible and, and you're drinking wine for almost anything. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, um, so yeah I, I would say uh, the right companies are, are putting putting their people first that showcase their craft. And wine is a craft. Wine is an art. Farming yeah. is an art putting that up front. That's Very awesome. Much so. Yeah. so we are here in New Orleans. This is going to be our last question. What is your favorite part about visiting New Orleans? So this is actually my first time. Oh, nice. Yes. Yes. We yes. first Day number two. Yeah. 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 No, no, no. <laughs> I will say so far, uh, I, like I said, I'm, I come from a small town. I live in a small town, so okay. it's not big. So my the most experience for me has just been the amount of people and like lights and sound. And yeah. I, I mean, I live on the ranch, so I'm about two and a half miles up on a mountain. Like my dog, I remember her first time hearing a police siren. She did not act. Oh right. my god! So, like, <laughs> so just being like, you can feel the energy in yeah. this town. Like, and what's been really fun for me is just. Like, I feel like in our culture, like, everything's pretty comedic. So I was sure. just walking around listening to stories. Oh, oh yes! <laughs> exactly. Yes. Jacqueline. I was laughing so hard because, like, you know, our just our own expressions of things. Yeah. I don't hear those very often, so yeah. to hear them, like, yeah. I, so it's, it's, you can definitely just feel the energy. You can feel the love. You can feel, like, 
you know, everybody's probably some distant cousin, so you can talk about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I had somebody, I had somebody yeah. help me out the other day. I was like, thank you. Yeah. You know, she didn't even hesitate to walk up. She just saw me struggle. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I was like, yeah, I okay. got you. Uh-huh. So, like, yeah. just to have that has been my favorite so far. But this is my first trip here, and I'll be here through Monday. So, yeah. Um, that I just like the energy of the city. Yeah. Well, I'm, let me tell you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Glenn. No, go ahead. I am so glad you do what you do. Me because too. Because that is a face in the wine my industry energy. that people don't see, see often. Yeah. Exactly. And they don't. When they think of the wine industry, they think about marketing, they think about branding, they think about making right. the wine, mm-hmm. selling the wine. But behind the wine it are faces that we need to see, see more. Exactly. And people, you know, you're looking, young people in careers, that that is something that they right. can get mm-hmm. into. Right. And that it is, you know, sexy to get into. Do it's right. hard work. So thank you. Thank you. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And on that note, we have our Women Behind the Wine campaign, which I am super passionate about. But we offer a scholarship as well for women either studying to get into vitaminology or women who are looking for a career change. But showcasing women in operations that are behind Uh the wine. Like, you know, not all of us are the face of it, but who's making your stuff? And so this campaign shows a number of different women uh, in different brands. Uh, throughout Gala that craft the wines you love mm-hmm. and kind of give you a, a foray like you can do this too. Right. Nice. We're in every aspect yeah. of a wine making yes. process. Jump in because right. while right now you might be referred to as a unicorn, eventually you're going to just be the norm. Right? Yeah. You yeah. know, and people right. are going to get excited because you're good at your job, not because you're a black woman or a minority. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And, that's and so, key. and how so. do people find out more about that and tell everybody where they can follow you? So you can go to womenbehindthewine.com. On Instagram, you can go to Wine Dialogues. And if you care to follow me, I am Cabernet on Instagram. C-A-B-R-E-N-A-E. <laughs> All right. All right. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you very much for this interview. interview. Bye. That's Bye. It. We're back, right. guys. Anybody want some sparkling oh, wine? Of course we want sparkling oh, wine. Oh, right. Right. Did you hear him? He just asked us if we want any sparkling wine. <laughs> <laughs> this is the swirl sweet. We sparkle with wine, right? All right. So this is our, our non-vintage J Cuvée 20. Uh, this is from the heart of Sonoma, uh, coming from our wonderful uh, J Vineyards and Winery, producer of amazing sparkling wines and still wines coming out of Sonoma. Thank you. And the J Cuvée 20 was created uh, to celebrate the 20 year anniversary of the winery that was started in 1986. Uh, but why stop uh, celebrating after 20 years? Let's keep celebrating now. So cheers to cheers. Black Wine. Oh, this is Black Wine. It's okay to drink. Good job. That's the kind of job you want. You can drink on the job, right? Cheers to Swirl Sweet and the Black Wine Experience. Cheers. Nice and cold because it is 95 degrees outside. Oh, it's here, so hot. So. The heat is so disrespectful down here in New Orleans. <laughs> 95 degrees, that's a cold day in New Orleans. I know, well, with 95% humidity. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's a little bit yes. warmer, right? So please tell everybody who you are and what you do. All right, so I'm Derek Epps. I'm an event marketing strategist for the ENJ Gala Winery. i uh, also been the champion for diversity and inclusion within our company and within the entire industry for the past year. You know, diversity and inclusion is very, um, I'm passionate about it. I love it. We all need it. We need it in our world. Uh, so why not do it in the wine industry and why not be the leader of it? Excellent. Excellent. And he's doing great things. Yeah. He's doing great things. Yeah. Cheers. 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 Cheers to that. Yeah. <laughs> We're proud of you. Tell us about the many shades of wine and how that came right. about. So many shades of wine was all about how can we, uh, as the ENJ Gala Winery, create a platform that gives the underrepresented community within the wine industry, which is people of color, an opportunity and a platform to talk about what's real. Uh, so thankfully it was my brainstorm, I created it, I curated it, and I said, you know what, there are many African American people of color, African American or people of color doing amazing things in the industry. Uh, we don't have a voice, so let's create a platform, let's create a voice. Uh, so we partnered with Twitter, it was an amazing event in New York City, and we just talked about all the ins and outs of the wine industry as a person of color. We talked yeah. about opportunities for growth, and then we truly inspired everybody through that panel discussion. Uh, and it was an amazing event. 
So, so this will be an annual thing? You do this every year? Oh, nice. Okay. Nice. <laughs> okay. you know, so stay tuned. Nice. Annual events. Biannual, triannual, Bi -annual, every day, you know. Everything. Uh, diversity and inclusion is such a powerful topic. You know, we need to be talking about diversity and inclusion every single day. And now it's more than diversity and inclusion. It's really diversity, equity, and inclusion. Because okay. we can't talk about diversity and inclusion if we don't have equity in what we're this doing. Is true. So, but you guys have equity. You guys are three women of color doing amazing things. Mm -hmm. You know, creating, once again, a platform. Mm -hmm. We need a platform to talk about. We can say these issues or these opportunities. We need a, a platform to talk about it and have open, honest discussion so that the overall industry sees the opportunity sure. yeah. because exactly. we need the wave of the industry to push the culture forward. Exactly. We can't do it by ourselves. We are the little piece of the pie. We need the big piece of the pie to really carry the weight and really change the conversation about what's going on in the industry. So when you had this idea, um, how receptive was Gallo to uh, this idea. Best thing ever, you know, Gallo is very receptive. So I've been with Gallo for 15 years, and uh, you know, we I talk about um, they started diversity and inclusion about 15 years ago, where they found me at a historically black college university, HBCU, HBCU in the house, yes. <laughs> Johnson C. Smith in the, uh, University. Hey. So somebody within our organization had the foresight then to let's find diverse candidates to come work in the industry. Oh, nice. I've been around 15 years and now I owe that back to the person that found me at HBCU mm -hmm. to try to change mm -hmm. uh, the uh, culture of our company to make it more diverse and inclusive right. and also hopefully change the industry as well. Nice. Um, so the Gallo senior leadership, the Gallo family are very supportive. Um, it really sits within the core values of the company. You know, we can talk about diversity and inclusion for people of color, um, for uh, Asian, Latino. We can talk about diversity and inclusion for the LGBTQ, LGBTQ community. Yeah. or women, uh, mm -hmm. which we're here celebrating the Women in Wine campaign. Yeah. This is part of Wine Dialogues, uh, but this family is beyond supportive, and us being the leader of the uh, wine industry, we really need to make sure we're pushing the charge. That's oh, excellent. nice, nice. That's excellent. Is there something that you would, the one thing that you would tell our listening audience and tell an African-American male or female what they should do to get into this industry or how they should oh, just I'll let you well, I'll be honest, it's an amazing industry. You know, we're sitting here having fun, and right. it's not what we do all the time. We don't just sit and drink all day long. Uh, <laughs> but it's an amazing industry, um, starting with the history of wine, from a person that's a wine educator, to a person that's a sommelier, uh, to a person that may work in the vineyard, uh, to a winemaker who actually makes the wine, to a person like myself that does marketing, mm -hmm. sales, finance, uh, creative. I mean, it's an entire industry. So, Multifaceted. And the industry is growing. It's yeah. the only industry yeah. that continues to grow no matter what. Mm -hmm. um, there are many small producers of wine, and we can talk about spirits as well because it's right. opportunities with spirits Absolutely. as well. Exactly. Yeah. Um, there's events like we're doing here. It's, yeah. it's fun. It's a, it's, it's a lot of hard work. Uh, there's opportunities within the distributor. So really just get online, start researching some of the distributors that are out there. Yeah. Research. Think about, you can start with your favorite drink. Exactly. What's your, what's your favorite drink? Exactly. Right. It right. might be, hopefully it's Jay Vineyards. Jay Vineyards. <laughs> <laughs> so actually go to jvineyards.com and learn about Jay Vineyards. And from yeah. there, you can start learning and be like, oh, there's opportunities there. We actually, or you can go to gallocareers.com. Oh. If you want to join the Gallo Winery, go to gallocareers.com or ejgallo.com. We are hiring. We're looking for more diverse mm. candidates to come nice. and mm -hmm. add to all the amazing things we're doing in the industry. Um, once you can go to the distributors, or you can, there's even agencies if you want to work at an agency and do marketing. Mm. There's nice. so many different parts of the industry that you can enter um, to where we all come together and drive this. Oh, excellent. It's or you can be your own entrepreneur and start your own winery. <laughs> <laughs> right. So when you were found at an HBCU, mm -hmm. what's your background? So thankfully, I actually had a degree in marketing. marketing. Uh, so okay. 15 years late, I, well, no, I'll say, I started, I did sales because when you talk about marketing, you talk about sales at the right. same time. So I did sales for about four and a half, five years. Mm -hmm. and then I went into event marketing uh, mm. with Barefoot Wine. Barefoot Wine. Oh, is, so you started in wine. I started, you started in wine. Okay. Yeah. I started okay. in a grocery store as a sales consultant mm -hmm. on my hands and knees yeah. in a Winn-Dixie Winn in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. <laughs> wow. In Publix, uh, wow. literally cleaning the bottom shelves, mm -hmm. grinding, um, making sales pre presentation yeah. to the person buying the wine. Um, and then now, throughout that, you know, you started sales, you learn how to sell the product, you learn about the product, mm -hmm. and then from there, you go into, all right, I have a degree in marketing. Mm -hmm. I want to do marketing. I want to engage with people. Right. I mm -hmm. love events. I want to do event marketing. So for the past 10 years, I've been doing event marketing and strategy, putting on amazing events all around the country uh, with the support of the various brands in the Gallup portfolio. 
Um, and then uh, in the near future, I'll be ruled, moving to a new role as a multicultural marketing manager. For the nice. Wow. So, That's amazing. So we talk about support. Here's the world's largest winery. Um, family owned, allowing me to be an entrepreneur within the major right. oh, that's, that's mm. company. I love that word. Entrepreneur. Yeah. Yeah. Entrepreneur. Yeah. I, I like that. Yeah. And give me the opportunity to thrive and follow what I believed in, which mm -hmm. was diversity and inclusion, multicultural mm -hmm. marketing, and creating opportunity for me to go and push these initiatives. So um, mm. rarely do you see a major corporation do something like yeah, that. Um, so that's why uh, I feel like I'm a family member sometimes. I, yeah. <laughs> and you know, that's actually outstanding because what it tells me is that Ernest Julia Gow has a vision in itself that understands there's a market for that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because no company really does this without seeing what's in it for them. Mm -hmm. So it's dollar and cents. They understand the buying power, the buying power yeah. mm -hmm. of diverse mm -hmm. people yeah. and how it can benefit. It's a win-win for everyone. Definitely yeah. win-win. You know, of course, we're in the business to make money and sell wine, but right. you, know, you still yeah. want to be in tune with what's going on in society. Society, and exactly. Do the right thing. This benefits everybody right. that uh, consumes wine. All the brands we make, many different brands of wine. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that everything we do resembles the people that consume our products. Right. Exactly. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm very blessed. I can say that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's so. good. We would, we've been talking a lot about there's wine targeted to certain demographics. And I love the fact that the wine that you're pouring today is open and not pigeonholed mm. to <laughs> exactly. certain, a certain type of wine for a certain demographic. And I appreciate that your company and you recognize that there's diversity in race, ethnicity, but there's also diversity of palate. Palette, yes. sure. Exactly. And you can appreciate the diversity and palate. Yeah. We definitely have diversity within the wine industry. Mm -hmm. We're talking about sweet wines, Moscatas of the world. Right, yeah. right. Uh, so, Go yeah, ahead we, and say it. We can <laughs> joke about it, uh, but guess yeah, as what? I sip, I'm just gonna At the end of the day, Moscato is an amazing, or Muscat is an amazing grape, and all the other great varietals that go in to make the Moscato mm -hmm. wine. Yeah. So for those entry-level wine drinkers, yes, we want them to go and drink Moscato, right. whether, no matter what uh, religion or color they may be, right. you know, it's right. a if wonderful wine. You to it's your palate, like sweet. But mm -hmm. of course, we want people to transition into yeah. more premium, yeah. drier right. styles, wine, sparkling wines from California. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, everybody's on the rosé craze, so yep. you can't say just because you look like this, this is all you can right. drink. So right. that's where, yeah. as the industry, mm -hmm. hopefully the industry will invest in the multicultural community, understand the complexity right. of the multicultural yeah. community, and create products, not even create products, showcase the products product. that already right. exist exactly. to right. the multicultural mm -hmm. community. And that all comes in investment, and that all comes in marketing. I mean, not just marketing investment, but engagement. Engagement. Right. Engagement in the community. Coming right. down to Essence Festival here in New Orleans with 600,000 people of color right. celebrating culture, investing yes. in this, and saying, right. hey, we make products too. You enjoy our products. Right. We want right. to be the part right. of We want to engage with you. Exactly. We want to support your community. Yeah. So, exactly. Yeah, it's a lot. Because your, pad your palate doesn't need to stay static. Yeah. Yeah. Your palate may start in one variety or one style, mm -hmm. but as humans and we need to evolve. Okay. So your palates evolve mm -hmm. and you try and evolve into appreciating different styles. I, I look at it as aspiration. We all have aspiration, mm -hmm. lifestyles. We want to do better in life. Right. So right. we should want to drink better. Mm -hmm. We should exactly. want to eat better, yeah. uh, exactly. eat more healthy foods. Yeah. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Have higher education. Oh, there are those people that don't when it's fine. It, because yeah. guess what? At the end of the day, we got products for everybody. Right. Exactly. Uh, but when for those people that do aspire, there's something for everybody. Well. Yeah. Exactly. Well, yeah, I mean, like if you're five year old, they eat peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> you don't want to say that. You're not going to eat Listen, peanut butter and jelly. I have yeah. a three year old and a one year old. I may have had a peanut butter and jelly sandwich yesterday, so don't judge me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're drinking some wine. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Right. Exactly. <laughs> so, uh, and you move from milk to the pe uh, to the wine that there So here's well. the question, social media world: uh, What wine pairs with peanut butter and jelly? Mm. Oh, well, I think uh, Cabernet. Cabernet. Okay. I like that. That's a good yes, choice. a Cabernet yeah. because of the peanut butter and the oil in the yeah. butter. Yeah. Yes. And the uh, the dark tree fruit that come from a yeah. straight yeah. jelly. Or or exactly. Maybe a jelly. California Pinot Noir. Um, oh, the heavy right. peanut. Yeah, yeah. yeah heavier the peanut. Yeah, y'all gonna be making good. peanut butter and jelly, jelly sandwiches, yeah. drinking wine, but you know what? Yeah, Cut, yeah. cutting off the crust, of the peanut butter <laughs> and, jelly. and making it a little, yeah. uh, what do you call it, a little sandwich? Oh, for like <laughs> high, not high tea, but whatever. Uh, wine. I would say, uh, Jay, wine goes very well. That would be. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> so, the J was Tell us about with? the J sparkling. Sparkling wine out of California goes well with peanut butter and jelly. That's what we determined. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but we're a great producer. Uh, you know, I love sparkling wine because mm -hmm. I like to celebrate every day of life. Yes, uh, so that's indeed. why I chose mm -hmm. sparkling wine here. Mm -hmm. uh, within the J uh, vineyards, we have our, this is the J Cuvée 20. Mm -hmm. We also have a J California Cuvée that we launched. Mm -hmm. We have some uh, vintage specific uh, tiers of the sparkling. And then also we have the, the famous Brut Rosé. Okay. Which is right over there. Oh, yeah. so when we finish yeah. this interview, we can go over there and grab some Brut Rosé. Yes, yes, we will. Because <laughs> it's Rosé season. It's Like I said, it's 95 degrees, so yeah. we need to drink some Rosé. Exactly. So we just have to just give you a shout out. Thank you. I, you know, I just want to say it, it makes me proud to see brothers like you representing us so classy. Oh, thank you, thank you. And on a put, level... I should have put a tie on. Right. Right. Even <laughs> though he's sitting here with his top oh, button all the way up. He's on... That's about breeze outside. <laughs> <laughs> he's still got it. It's linen. Y'all okay. know. Y'all can tell. Yeah. It is linen. Uh -huh. but we just want to say thank you for representing us yeah. and being in the position to say, hey, here's some people. Come... We have these positions, if you're qualified, because you can get the word out yeah. to a community that might not know that these jobs are available to them as yeah. well. Because, you know, you know it, all of them are younger than me. Let's, let's start there. <laughs> um, but back when she we were all growing up, <laughs> well, you know, when we were growing up, you know, what did you hear? Be an engineer, a doctor, or a lawyer. <laughs> Right. Or well, like me, you get that good government job. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, right. yeah. You, you don't leave it. Right. Never leave. Okay, right. exactly. Right. Yeah. And there are so many more careers out here that are available yeah. to us yes. that can showcase your skills and yeah. abilities. And you can be creative. And yeah. you can be creative yeah. and doesn't have to be stifled. So yeah. that's why I don't have any more because I drink okay. Jay okay. like well, we, we, we like, I just want to say being hey. stingy with the sparkling <laughs> wine. But no, let me thank you, all three of you, for it. Number one recognizing what I'm doing and giving me opportunity to come be on your podcast. Mm -hmm. um, and number three, being you. entrepreneurs, you know, because we yeah. talked about the opportunity in industries right. and you guys are trailblazers, being entrepreneurs, having this conversation about exactly. everything yeah. that's going on so people can find out about how they can be involved. So yeah. we joked about earlier, you can be an entrepreneur in this industry right. and do yeah. amazing yeah. things. Or you can come work for the ENJ Gala Winery See? at on Instagram, Gala Careers, um, at uh, what's, the, what's the other thing we use? The internet. That's internet. What it's <laughs> internet. So all social media platforms. Yeah, yeah. All social media right. platforms, LinkedIn. And uh, just one other thing, you know, um, why I'm so fond and I've been with Gala Wine for so long, you know, we focus on our employee resource groups. Okay. Uh, once again, giving a platform for people of different backgrounds, multicultural, uh, 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 a voice within the company. Right. Mm -hmm. So we have seven uh, employee resource groups. We have come together, and most recently, uh, we had the Gala African American Network, who had the first ever summit. It was just empowerful because uh, we led the charge about that conversation about absolutely. diversity and inclusion. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, so it's exciting. And we had the first ever Black History Month campaign on social media. Nice. Uh, so we now we're saying, hey, industry. Yeah. We're here. We're here. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see you guys do the same thing. So the challenge is out there. Yeah. Let's make sure that we're really focusing on diversity and inclusion and engaging with our multicultural audience and consumers and wine lovers who enjoy all of our products. Excellent. So. So one thing we were talking about yesterday was the power of the consumer. Mm -hmm. And there was this discussion about is it influenced by the distributor, is it influenced by the supplier, but it was really the consumer. Mm -hmm. And it's really at this point now where you can pinpoint who's consuming your product mm -hmm. and how to get your product there. Right. Mm -hmm. And so if there are people out there who want to have this, but it's not carried in their local wine shop or what have you, how do you encourage them to influence their wine shop mm -hmm. to carry your product? Be persistent, find that wine shop that you, I mean, you're a customer. So we know we have to change the mindset of marketing. Marketing mm -hmm. 101 mm -hmm. has changed. It, mm -hmm. uh, the consumer products and good industry, we always create a product here. This is product is for you. Mm -hmm. right. That's out the window. Mm -hmm. It's, we need to, hey, what do you like? Yeah. What mm -hmm. makes you feel good? Yeah. Yeah. That's what you like? Okay, let me create a product right. exactly. for you. Yeah. So right. the industry and producers of wine and any other consumer products, mm -hmm. whether it's tennis shoes, we need to listen. And the right. best way to listen to the mm -hmm. consumer 
is through social media. Right. Yeah. yeah. So right. Yeah. we need yeah. to follow what the trends are going on within culture mm -hmm. and say, all right, these are my consumers. I want to engage with this set of group. I want to engage with everybody. Let me understand more right. what the consumer wants yeah. and then create products around it. Right. Instead yeah. of just always dictating what goes out. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, active listening. A consumer can easily go into their local wine shop and mm -hmm. say, hey, I found this hidden gem of a wine, I love it. Mm -hmm. It may be a needle on a haystack, right. it's hard to, which uses us to taste, you can right. find it, but yeah. uh, once again, using the internet, do your research, figure out who the producer is, mm -hmm. and you know, try to be that sales consultant for that producer. Right. Yeah. Because that yeah. person that you fell in love with, that wine you fell in love with, it might be the smallest producer ever that doesn't have a platform mm -hmm. to be distributed right. everywhere. Yeah. So if yeah. you can be that one person that vouches for them, gets that retailer to buy it, you're moving the needle and helping that entrepreneur exactly. now sell more products. Exactly, yeah. nice. So, Absolutely. Nice, yeah. nice. Yeah. So be the voice. Be the voice. Be the voice. Be the, be the voice. I always joke about. You remember that movie um, by Wayne's brother, uh, White Chick? White oh, Chick. Yeah. Yeah. She's like, I'm gonna write a letter. That's why I always like. I'm writing a letter, letter. to management. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm writing a letter to management. Exactly. So, oh, that's funny. So or use Twitter. I use. I'm not gonna name any company right now, but I tweet everybody, Do and it's you? usually about something. Mm -hmm. It might be a small frustration, but the oh, power. They pay attention. They pay attention. Oh, uh -huh. Like. Mm -hmm. yeah two-minute responses from major corporations. Sure. And don't do it always with negative stuff. Do it yeah. with positive stuff. Positive, yeah. exactly. Say, yeah. hey, I love yeah. your brand. Yeah. yeah. Because companies, we are listening. We want to hear what our mm -hmm. consumers, uh, how they engage with us. It's a two-way right. conversation. Absolutely. Uh, exactly. It's yeah. sometimes a three-way conversation. Really, mm -hmm. we want it to be a 150-way conversation because we want whatever you post on social media mm -hmm. for people to pick it up. Exactly. Yeah. We want more people to engage because it's authentic that way. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. So keep talking about all the wonderful products. So. There you go. <laughs> So is there a website for Many Shades of Wine or how can people follow you and what you're doing? So uh, at this point, Many Shades of Wine, the panel discussion, uh, we're planning one very soon. Just follow the hashtag Many Shades of Wine. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully websites okay. to, uh, to be coming in the future okay. and hopefully mm -hmm. social media handle. Okay, um, so. But in the meantime, you can still file Wine Dialogues okay. uh, at Wine Dialogues on Instagram. Um, that is another platform that coincides with what Many Shades of Wine is, mm -hmm. uh, a platform for diversity and inclusion within the industry. Got it. Okay. Excellent. Awesome. You can oh. also follow me if you want to follow what I do. I am on Instagram at I am Derek Epps, D-E-R-E-K-E-P-P-S, and I talk all the time. You got to excuse my kids. They're on, they're on, they're on, they're on social media sometimes. <laughs> He's so very shy and bachelor as you all can tell. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> oh, we love it. You know, I just, I'm just blessed and thankful that we can all come together yes. in a plat uh, on a stage like this, mm -hmm. not necessarily the proverbial stage, and to just talk about something that we all love. Yes. Because wine is a social mm -hmm. entity. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you can have a conversation with someone, mm -hmm. you know, traveling around the world. Yeah. and. Wine could be the linchpin between yeah. the two that you were like, oh, we can really connect. Exactly. Yeah. So that's what. And that conversation yeah. about wine never ends. And yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. and it never like ends. And the best thing you said is we can connect. We can come together. Y'all can't hear the music in the background, but it's about to be a Soul Train line. Right. <laughs> or electric slide <laughs> in a minute. Electric slide because we're going to do what we, we do. Come together. It's a family, family reunion right now. Yeah. So. It's a family, <laughs> family reunion. Exactly. And, exactly. you know, we're going to celebrate, toast and sparkle the wine, and drink the wine for the rest of the evening. Yeah. yeah. All Afternoon day. Evening, yeah. all night. Yeah, exactly. we, are, we are in New Orleans, so it might yeah. be a long night. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and breakfast. Yeah. Oh, breakfast. Yeah. breakfast. Yeah. breakfast. Yeah. breakfast. Yeah. breakfast. Yeah. Exactly. Cheers to Derek Cheers. 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 So guys, this interview with Jenny Don got cut off a little bit. So she is talking about her un -oak Chardonnay. She is out of Wichita, Kansas, making great wine. She uses California grapes and she's doing a fantastic job. So here's her describing her Chardonnay that we are tasting. So it gives it a really light, crisp, and refreshing, um, you know, taste. And the body is fairly light. Um, you're going to get green apple and pear notes as well as the citrus. This is on oak and not stainless steel. This was on oak. This is phenomenal for oak char. Because I'm not an oak char girl. This oh, is that's nice. And that's where I feel like is my specialty is mm -hmm. blending these grapes yeah. so that they oh, are nice. not yeah. a mm -hmm. typical California Chardonnay. Chardonnay. Yes. Which so, is a big oak buttery. It is a very big 
oaky, buttery, yeah. mm-hmm. almost thick. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. And yeah. I have an unoaked, and then I have a slightly oaked, okay. which is like really round and creamy, mm-hmm. but it's still not thick and buttery. This is so phenomenal. This is I feel really like good. Chardonnay mm-hmm. as a vintner is one of my, I feel like, specialties. Oh, that's that I'm kind of master. Are you, do you do a second fermentation? Um, we do not, actually. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not, so. I have some people who would love this. They're Chardonnay people, yeah. and they love light, refreshing, um, crisp. You have your citrus notes. You have your. Hmm, it's just. This is good. Phenomenal! <laughs> I did not expect this. I'm sorry. <laughs> I did not expect this, and that's in a good way. Well, and I feel like our wines um, have been underestimated, Mm -hmm. you know, I am very new to the industry, so I started my wine brand in 2016, but Mm -hmm. launched these wines in October of 17. Wow. Right. Um, But I started making wine in my basement five years ago, (laughs) and just kind of experimented, but then um, started going to school. Or I'm in the uh, UC Davis wine okay. uh, certification mm-hmm. program, mm-hmm. so I'm really honing my analogy, yeah. my mm-hmm. analogy knowledge and skills, okay. so that I can produce some great, yeah. Yeah. world-class yeah. wines. Can we back up to so, so like how what inspired you to start making wine in your basement? So I was a huge wine connoisseur, and looking at my family's budget, I was like, oh my gosh, I am spending a lot of yeah. money on wine. <laughs> I wonder if I can us. make it for yeah. less than yeah, what I pay on the the liquor store yeah. shelf. And I could, and those wines actually were good. They were Mm -hmm. really good wines, and I'd give them away to my family and friends for um, gifts. And people Mm -hmm. were like, Jennifer, you should really try and get into this, like for real, for real. And so I put together a business plan and started making wine in Napa. But we are in the process of opening the first urban winery in downtown Wichita in two months. Wow. We broke ground this week. Oh, wow. Cheers. Cheers. Yes. Cheers. 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 Cheers to that. Cheers. And we're having our official groundbreaking ceremony next week. Mm. What's interesting about this is, as you know, women are mu- masters of multitasking. She just said they broke ground this week, mm-hmm. and she's here uh-huh. <laughs> show, showcasing her wait, wines. Wait, not only is she here on time with her award-winning wine, wine, she's got staff with her. Staff she with her. prepared. <laughs> exactly. Listen, what is it talking about being prepared? prepared. Yeah. Yeah. We have been talking about that so much. Oh. And <laughs> you have to be. You have to be. Yes. yes. I yes. think that's one of the things that has mm-hmm. set me apart is mm-hmm. because... I'm a visionary, and so mm-hmm. I'll put my goals and dreams out there mm-hmm. uh, very publicly. Right. Yeah. But I back it up through mm-hmm. getting things done and being prepared and yeah. planning yes. and research and analysis. And, yeah. you know, it, it takes a lot. You yes. have to be driven to be successful yes. in this yeah. industry. Yes. Mm-hmm. And, and let's talk about, like, you look great and put together, mm-hmm. but how much work is it on the back end yeah. mm. to start mm-hmm. this? Yeah, right. mm-hmm. absolutely. So on the back end for me is growing. So mm-hmm. I planted an orchard and a vineyard wow. over the last two years. So the mm-hmm. first summer I planted fruit trees because okay. I love sangria and I love oh. a fruit blend, oh. like oh, wine nice. as the base nice. for sangria. Yeah. Uh-huh. So we're growing strawberries, peaches, and apples okay. to accumulate that blend. Wow. And then I planted grapevines with the help of my husband. He built mm-hmm. the trellis for me. Nice. I have seven rows of vines, okay. and then I planted Brianna vines mm-hmm. and uh, Traminette vines. Nice. Wow. So the back end of winemaking is getting into the growing yeah. and right. having yeah. a vineyard because um, in Kansas, there is a great shortage. Mm. So prohibition hit our industry extremely hard in the 30s. It was mm-hmm. prohibition yes. started in yeah. Kansas, yeah. Mm-hmm. and it completely halted the grape production. So people were growing to the amount of what Napa was producing. Like right. we, we yeah. stayed yeah. on yeah. that trajectory, mm-hmm. we could yeah. have been like a Napa Valley wow. in Kansas. Mm-hmm. Nice. But it just shut it down until the 80s. And then finally in the 80s, people started planting grapevines. So there is a high demand for grapes and a low supply. 
So for me, I wanted to get started with California grapes, mm-hmm. yeah. and I've done that, and I have six California grape wines. Mm-hmm. But um, for me to truly get licensed in Kansas, I have to have 30% of the grapes of my product be Kansas grapes. Oh wow! Do so you now have to have I'm, that on the bottle. So for it to say Kansas, you uh-huh. have to have 30%. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. And so I'm growing, but then I'm also sourcing grapes from local growers. Okay. okay. But I'm barely getting enough to meet that yeah, 30% percent. threshold. Oh, okay. So in order for us to scale our operation year over year, we do have to grow our grapes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Can I ask what your like professional background is? I was your your that. business yeah. like uh, communication is very uh, concise. Like, exactly. Very, it's very clear. You um, know exactly what you're saying. It's. It seems like you're very intentional about what you're doing. Can I ask what you're like? Background. Yeah, yes, your absolutely. Background. So I started my career in human resources and recruiting. Uh, okay. And I worked for very large mm-hmm. corporate companies. Okay. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense now. Yeah, because you have to be but, clear and communicating yeah. the vision of the company mm-hmm. to make sure you're hiring what the company's needs mm-hmm. are Absolutely. in that in that human resource or that human yeah. capital. Yeah. So yes. that's it. It's mm-hmm. not that doesn't surprise me now that you've said yeah. it. Uh-huh. <laughs> Can we talk about Kansas? Yes. Um because first of all I, I didn't know black people were in Kansas. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> Shit out there. Yes. I didn't know that. Didn't That's know how that. we do on a so social media. Yes, we have a black community in Wichita really? and they are very supportive of mm-hmm. my endeavor. Um, I'm actually going to be the first African American commercial winemaker in the state of wow. Kansas. When I go Brown to my Viking, yes, industry conference, I'm the only one in the room. Mm. Um, I'm one of the very few, even female millennials mm. in the room. Mm-hmm. Wow. So what I am doing in Kansas mm-hmm. is monumental, and mm. um, I'm I'm happy to just diversify the industry. Yeah. yeah. Keyword this yeah. whole weekend: hashtag diversity. Yes. In yeah. wine. Diversity in wine. What's your, what's your wine scene like? Um, you guys have like wine bars or wineries or anything like that? So in the Wichita, well, let's talk about Kansas first. So okay. in Kansas, there's about 50 licensed wineries and vineyards. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, our neighbor state, though, of Missouri has like 150. Sure. So right. yeah. it's just, it we're slow, we're yeah. slowly okay. growing that industry. In Wichita, there's two key players that one is north of the city and one south of the okay, city, okay. Mm-hmm. but there wasn't anything in the city. Yeah. So I'm going to be the first urban winery wow. to grow grapes in the city mm-hmm. and make wine in the city. Yeah. Excellent. Because as a wine connoisseur, I like the experience of going to a winery exactly. and learning mm-hmm. about the winemaking yeah. process and just enjoying that experience. And there wasn't anything like that yeah. close yeah. to me yeah. that I could do after work. Yeah. Right. And so we want to just allow people to come in, you know, after work, or you can even stop by on your lunch break mm-hmm. right. Right. and have a moment with us. It's yeah. great an experience yeah. with us. Can we talk about your, um, I'm very interested in your wine growing season. So when do you start harvesting? When do you start making wine? What's your season like? Yeah, that is a really good question. So in Kansas, it gets really hot. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So we find that um, we're harvesting in August and then kind of finishing up early October, end of September. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Which is like the normal time harvest season elsewhere, like Mm -hmm. that October... Or is that crush? That's crush. That's crush. Because in Maryland, okay. we, they, they um, harvest in August. August, right. Start in August. August. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's crush. And it's then crush it's season. late to harvest in October. Right. Like, you're waiting for the fruit to be extremely ripe at that point oh, yeah. if, you're, mm-hmm. if you're picking it up. Yeah. 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 Right. And you mentioned some very non-traditional grapes that make great wine. Uh-huh. So, can you talk about those again? Yeah, that you're absolutely. Growing? Okay. So with the Brianna and Traminette, they're really nice uh, white wines that mm-hmm. get you a really good semi-sweet mm-hmm. wine. Yeah. Uh-huh. And they, I like fruit forward mm-hmm. wines and both of those have really good noses yeah. of the fruit. And Traminette can actually be a little bit spicy. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, and so I think that's kind of yeah. an interesting you know, component as well. Well, I like the fact that you're growing grapes that grow well in your area, mm-hmm. and you're not growing 
popular grapes and then trying to make good wine. Exactly. Yeah, yeah that doesn't work. There's so many growers yeah. who have tried that mm -hmm. and it just doesn't work. And it so doesn't. As an industry, we are actually, we worked with the legislature mm -hmm. to get Chamberson as mm -hmm. our red grape of the state. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. And then Vignoles is actually the white grape yes. of the okay. state. Yes. So mm -hmm. um, those are two that a lot of growers have had some success with. That's because it's, it's very similar in Maryland. Mm -hmm. Chamberson is. is done right. in so many different styles. Uh -huh. um, Vanilles you don't see as much, but you see a lot of um, Tremonet. Mm -hmm. As a single varietal now, they use it a lot as a blending grape in the past, mm -hmm. but now you're starting to see, if you go into a Maryland um, tasting room, you will see Tremonet as a standalone. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. That's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, yeah, there's a lot of similarities. There is. Oh, yeah, there, there, there are. are. And it's yeah. so interesting. Um, Molly, you remember when we went to the Smithsonian? Oh, yes. Yeah, we we, that, mm -hmm. There was an American um, yep. wine tasting event wine tasting at the Smithsonian. Event. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, the wine was okay. But it was very interesting. And they talked about how the Midwest was like the California before Prohibition. Yeah, uh -huh. it was. And how is Ohio and Kansas mm -hmm. yeah. were the states that were producing most of the grapes. So it's yeah. interesting to see how you're starting to yeah. play. Yeah, yeah. we mm -hmm. are. We really are. And I'm excited about the synergy that we do have in the industry. So mm -hmm. I have been mentored by uh, two key wineries that have spent quite a bit of time with me. And so mm -hmm. I appreciate that. And I think we're trying to... Um, kind of elevate our, our level of excellence in right. winemaking mm -hmm. nice. to say, let's focus on what grows well, well. Yeah. and yeah. then do it well, make yeah. it well. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, because I feel like the tide, you know, as the tide rises, all the ships rise. Yeah. Right. So yeah. we're kind of all in it together. Yeah. Yeah. And that's key. Do what? And, and do you, that one thing well. And you yeah. mentioned mentor. Like, how did you go about finding a mentor? Um, that was gonna help you. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm grateful that I have business mentors that help me as an entrepreneur, yeah, and then I have had uh, wine industry uh, mentors okay. that have helped me on the specifics mm -hmm. of the industry. And mm -hmm. and so honestly, it was just because I was a customer yeah. of these wineries, and yeah. I just was in there asking questions. Yeah. They just kind of took me under their wing and you know gave me their yeah. personal cell phone numbers and said. If you have questions, don't hesitate to call, and and I did. Yeah, <laughs> you know, so I I would call and I would email and I would stop out. Yeah, and, um, they've just been very gracious with that's me. Yeah, nice. you know, that's one thing that we heard a lot of yesterday. You have to step outside. Step you outside. have to be in the face mm -hmm. of people. You do. Yeah, right. so they you know do. you and know what you're about. Absolutely, because yeah. that's where yeah. the trust begins. And sure. Like, I, I physically have met this individual. I've heard she or he talk to me about what their goals are, mm -hmm. and then they can decide whether those goals align with what they're trying to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. to, so it's like, oh, I can mentor you because I, because Mac just said that if you're doing, if you're out here grinding, and I see that you really are interested in this industry, yeah. I have no problem helping you. Yeah. Yeah. And he's been in the game mm -hmm. so right. long mm -hmm. yep. and has made you know a name for him and his winery. And that's exactly what it was saying. Yeah. It's about relationships and being true to your word and what you're going to do. Absolutely. Yeah. So where can everybody follow you and yes. your winery? Absolutely. Yeah. So we are very active on social media. Um, so we're on Facebook, Instagram under Jenny Dawn Sellers. We're on Twitter under Jenny Dawn uh, Seller. So no S. And then... <laughs> I don't know why we did that, but we just did. <laughs> and then we have a beautiful website, mm -hmm. JennyDonSellers.com. Mm -hmm. We can ship right now to California, Nebraska, and Kansas. Okay. But in two months, once our winery officially opens, we'll be able to ship to all 50 states. Oh, nice. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then we're also on LinkedIn as a, okay. Okay. As a business. Awesome. So in those couple of months, that would, so what happens with it? Will that be the direct-to-consumer? So what will happen, so technically right now, Jenny Don Sellers is licensed under a, under a California winery. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. It, what I found was it was easier to get licensed in California than it was to get licensed in Kansas. Are you serious? I'm, 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 I'm not surprised about that. I'm not surprised. physical location yeah. oh, to be licensed. 
Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're working on our physical location, which is our old train station. So Union Station oh, is where I'm going oh, into. Oh, nice. nice. And as nice. soon as the construction's done, then all my licensing will be complete, and I'll transition from a California license to a Kansas license. Oh, okay. Nice. And that at that point, I'll be able okay. to uh, distribute okay. and. Um, do direct to consumer, direct to consumer okay. on 50 states. But I do have a distributor right now, and so we're in nine different liquor stores in the Kansas area. Oh, that's that's amazing. amazing. That's outstanding. Yeah. Okay. You it's have amazing. been busy. Yeah, we yeah. have been busy. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And you're yes. a mom, too. I am a mom. So oh, I have a 13-year-old son, Desmond, and 11-year-old daughter, Emma, mm. and my husband and I have been married for 14 and a half years. Wow. wow. Support. Wow. Okay. <laughs> well, we need that support. Guys, please follow Jenny. Please. She's doing amazing things. And if you can find her wine in the area that you're located in that you're following and you want a delicious Chris clean That's Chardonnay. summer oh, really Chardonnay. Good. And even in we, the winter when you want something nice. Yeah. Just yeah. refreshing. Yeah. Because you could be cleaning up the house and you're just mm -hmm. like, oh, I need something nice and cool yeah. to drink. This mm -hmm. It's yeah. phenomenal. It is, yeah. It's an all around wine. <laughs> yeah. Cheers so to Jenny, guys. Cheers. 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 Hey guys, thanks again for listening. So that concludes our first episode of the Black Wine Experience with Brene, Derek, and Jenny. Please be sure to follow them. I will put all their um, information in the description box. Be sure to provide comments in iTunes. We love that. It makes us look good. Comment on Instagram and interact with us there as well. Cheers, guys, and stay tuned for episode two next week.